Welcome everyone, it's Neil here from 3D Tudor and I'm back again with, I guess, part tutorial but part something you guys are gonna love. That being a Blender Studio Lighting Portfolio Setup. But first of all, let me tell you where you can find it for free. So here we are on the 3D Tudor Gumroad website and as you can see, there are a lot of stuff here. We have models, we have courses, and you will also find here free things like material packs, resources that go along with my YouTube videos, and of course, this studio lighting pack. So head on over there and take a look. It grows every day, so even if there's something that doesn't interest you right now, then just stick your email in the bar, click follow, maybe something someday will come up that you're interested in. Now what if I told you you could have all these models and courses for the price of a cup of coffee every month? Well, if you're heading over to the 3D Tutor Patreon page, you can do just that. I really don't like not giving back to my supporters, so every month you will get access to all my courses as well as lots of other bonuses and news. But enough of all that, let's get started. So if you go to my Gumroad and download the Studio Lighting Pack and then open it up, you will find this Blender file. So double click the Blender file and it should end up with something like this. Now it doesn't look like much right now, but I'm going to change your mind very soon. So what I've painstakingly built here is a Blender file where you can just drop in any of your assets, click two buttons, and hey presto, a portfolio render appears. Too good to be true, right? Well, let me show you how this works. So you can see at the moment we've got actually a camera, we've got a human as well, which will also come with that, and that basically will give you um, a scale so you understand how big something is. The other thing that we've got, if you can look up here on the right hand side, is we've got all of these lights that are actually in here, but they're actually hidden so that when you bring in something, you can actually see what you're doing and place it where you need to be. So the other thing is though, these lights, they will appear when we actually render this out, but they won't appear when we actually are in our viewpoint shader. So now let's bring in something to actually render out. So if I come over to file, and what I want to do is I want to actually come down to where it says append. Now, before you bring it in, it's very important in your own Blender file that you come up to file and what you do is you come down to where it says external data and you must tick where it says automatically pack into Blender file and then save out your work. The reason for that is then it's going to pack all the textures and all um, the UVs, everything like that into one file. Once you've done that, come up to file, go down to append and what I'm going to use is I'm going to use my actual food sacks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my food sacks here, so you can see it's in here. I'm going to go to the Blender build. I'm going to actually click on the Blend file. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to where it says Object, because these now are actually within the Blend file. So you can see you've got meshes, materials, things like that. And you can actually bring in materials, but on this occasion, we're just going to bring in the object. So we're going to shift click one, shift click the uh, other two, click Append, and let it load up, drum roll. And there we go. And you can see that they've come in with all the textures and things like that. Now, um, you will see that if I just move these out into a certain position, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come now um, to my camera. So I'm just going to position my camera. Let's uh, press N just to bring um, open the view and click camera to view. And now I'm just going to position it, zoom in a little bit, and now I'm hoping to get a really good shot so I can see the grains and things like that. Now, all of these options are actually set up perfectly to take a really, really nice render. The lighting set up and soft, which I'll show you in a minute, so we've got soft shadows and things like that. Just everything's just set up really nice. I've even brought down the exposure to give a certain look. So you might want to turn this back up, but I want the look of kind of ESO type uh, medieval thing, something like that. So I've actually turned that down to there. The other thing that you just need to look at is just make sure that you're happy with the render first before you do anything else. So at the moment it's set to 5,000. Just set this to 200 and do actually a test render just to see where it looks like and then you'll have a good idea. Now, as I said, um, all we need to do now is come to the render button, come down to where it says uh, render image and you'll see that when I click it, it actually starts to render. And you can see exactly how nice this actually looks. So if I zoom out, you can see, like I said, we've got the really soft uh, shadow light in here. You've got a really nice uh, background on here. And you can see, best of all, that it's actually denoised all of these tiles as well. It's set up, actually. So if I go back once this is finished, so you can see how nice that looks. The one other thing that I should say is if I close this down now and go back, you can see at the moment the feature set is on experimental and it's set to GPU compute. Now there is one thing that I will say that if you put this um, onto um, supported 
and then you put this on CPU, so this is on your CPU instead, then you must go down and make sure that the performance is set higher. So to, I would try 256 tiles um, by 256. The reason for that is that if you're using your CPU, bigger tiles are better than smaller tiles. The other thing is as well, if you want to use your GPU, so let's put it on GPU uh, compute, Normally you have to put this on experimental, that's what I do. And then come over to your edit, go down to preferences, and what you want to do is you just want to make sure that CUDA is ticked, and if you're running a GeForce which supports CUDA, then just make sure these are both ticked. That then will enable you to actually use your graphics card efficiently. So let's close that down. So everyone, I hope you're happy with that. Um, check out the links um, down below if you want to actually look at my courses and things like that. And as I say, I'm going to give this away for free. If you want to make a small donation, then I'll be really happy with that. So thanks a lot, everyone, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.